the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to make a quick knit cowl using scrap yarn. That's right, this cowl can be made with just about any color of yarn you wish, and as many colors as you want. You just have to get the yarn you like, add some colors that you enjoy working with together, grab a pair of size nine 24 inch circular needles, and you'll be on your way. This is a very quick knit project, perfect for that last minute gift or ready for you to cast on tonight and have it done for this weekend. No matter what, you will enjoy this project. This is a free pattern on my website. I'll put a link to the pattern in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say. When you have your pattern, go ahead and gather some worsted weight yarn that you enjoy working with, your size nine circulars, and we can jump into this very simple stitch pattern. As you can see, I have a lot of scrap yarn just kind of laying around, and this is all the same weight yarn. It's actually all the same type of yarn. This is Chic Sheep. So it's all washable merino, worsted weight yarn, and I thought these colors looked really great together. I'm gonna start off with a color A, and you could choose whatever color you want for that. I'm gonna make this light brown color suede my color A, and I'm just gonna set those ones aside, and let's move them a little bit so they're out of the way. Once you've decided what color A will be for you, use the long tail cast on and cast on a multiple of 10 stitches. Once you have all of your stitches cast onto your circular needle, it's time to join to work in the round. So make sure that the ridge from your long tail cast on is all facing to the inside so that way you don't accidentally twist your cast on. And what we will do here, you can see I have my ridge all pointed to the inside. I will grab a stitch marker and I'll place the stitch marker directly onto my right hand needle and I'm ready to jump into my stitch pattern. Now I will ignore the remaining tail that I have. I planned really accordingly. I can trim this up later on if I want, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. At this point, I want to create some very simple rib stitches. So I will jump in and just begin working in one by one rib. So I'm gonna knit one and then purl one. Knit one and then purl one. Knit one and then purl one. And I will do this until this part of my cowl measures about an inch. Once you have reached about an inch of your ribbing, then it's time to introduce a new color. And this is the start of our pattern. So I'm just gonna randomly grab a color here. Let's just grab this really pretty velvet cutter color if I can find the end. That looks good. It's nothing, nothing like real life video, huh? And I'm gonna tie this color onto my working yarn. So I'm just tying it on. I'm not making a knot or anything. I'm just tying it on and pulling it up there. I'm not going to cut my working yarn yet. Um, you know what? No, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to cut my working yarn right now because I plan on using more than just two colors. If I was just using two colors, I would leave it be, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it. So now I have two tails that I can weave in later and that's just fine. Okay, let's begin round one. We start off by knitting five stitches, two, three, four, five. Now with our yarn in front, we slip five stitches as if to purl. So I'm gonna go in like I'm purling and slipping them off. One, two, three, four, five. That's my repeat. Now I go back to knitting five. So I bring my yarn back to the back. See, that leaves my float on the front. That's what I want. And I'm gonna knit five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Bring my yarn to the front and slip five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, bring my yarn back to the back. I'm gonna hold my yarn in the other hand in case those of you who are throwers just don't quite understand. So my yarn is in the back and I'm just going to knit five. So knit one, two, three, four, and five. Bring my yarn to the front and slip five. One, 
two, three, four, five. And I slip as if to purl. Bring my yarn back to the back, so that gives me that float, and I knit five, okay? I'm gonna do this all the way around. This is round one. I will also do this on rounds three and five. So on round two and four, I'm just going to knit. When I get to round six, that's when the action changes a little bit and we work a different stitch pattern. So let's go ahead and finish this round, then we'll knit the next round, then we'll do this same round again for round three, knit the following round, do the same round again for round five, and then on round six, we do something completely different. I'm gonna go back to my normal hand here and I'm gonna carry on. You go ahead and do the same and I'll meet you back here when it's time for round six. When you get to the end of the round, simply slip your marker over and then we will knit all of round two. So even those stitches we slipped, we're going to knit them. Round three, you wanna make sure you go back to the slip stitches again. So you start off with your knit five. Bring your yarn forward and then slip five. One, two, three, four, and five. Bring your yarn back and knit five. Bring your yarn forward and slip five. And just continue on. Make sure that you're not making those floats too super tight, okay? You wanna make sure that they have a little bit of give to them. Row four, you'll just knit again. Oh, if you come to a knot in your yarn, make sure you do cut it out. Don't just knit over it. Get rid of it, tie your, your yarn back on just like we did at the beginning, and then when we go in to weave in our yarn, at the end, we'll just weave in those tails. Simple as that, guys. When you get to round five, don't forget, this is another slip stitch round. Okay, I'm coming up to the final few slip stitches of my round five, and there we go. All together, that took me 10 minutes. So for all of those five rows, that took me 10 minutes, and it's time for us to do round six. Now round six is where we're going to do something slightly different than just knitting the round. We're gonna take care of those floats that we've been preparing, so let's dive in. The first thing we need to do is decide what our next color is gonna be, okay? So if you were just doing two colors, we didn't have to cut our brown color, we could have floated it up, but I'm actually going to cut my velvet color and I'm going, I think I'm gonna grab green tea. I love this color, I think it's so pretty and so vibrant. So I'm going to grab the green tea and I'm going to tie it onto the yarn I just cut, all right? and pulling that up. I, I tie that on there just because I feel like it helps it stay secure. I like that. Put my stitch marker back on. All right, here we go. Round six. We start off, we're going to knit five. Okay. Now, we have these five stitches that we've been dealing with all along where we've been slipping them. And what we wanna do is when we work the middle one there, we're going to be pulling from underneath those floats. So we've knit five, we're gonna knit two more. So there's one and two, which gives us a total of uh, seven. Now with my right hand needle, I'm gonna go underneath these floats and then go into the stitch on my left hand needle and knit it and when I knit it, I'm gonna bring it back underneath those floats and off. Can you see that? Okay, and now I will knit nine. Is 
seven, eight, and nine, and that puts me to the center of those uh, slip stitches again. Here we go. My camera stop. Let me try this again. We are going to take our right hand needle, go underneath those floats, go into the stitch on our left hand needle, yarn over, and pull it through that stitch just like you normally would to knit. Only we also want to bring that yarn we pulled through underneath all of those floats. Now we can let that stitch fall off our left hand needle and we're ready to carry on, okay? So we will do this all the way around until we get back here to our beginning and this will be where you do that stitch catching the floats and then you'll finish with knit two, okay? Once we do that, we will follow along with the stitch pattern for rows seven through 11. It's very similar to the one we just finished doing. It's just our floats are in a different position. So that way we don't have them all stacked on one another. It gets more of a checkerboard. Very simple stuff here. So let's go ahead and finish this round and then we can jump in and see what the next series of instructions would be. And then we'll carry on with the cowl. Here we are to the last special stitch that we're going to do. I finish with a knit two, slip my marker, and now I will carry on with the next series of repeats. So this time, because I don't want my floats here to be right on top of those, I'm going to slip the first five instead of my second five. So here at the start, Let's grab my working yarn so I'm using the correct one. I'm with the same color here. I'm gonna bring my yarn forward. I will slip five, bring my yarn back to the back, and then knit five. One, two, three, four, five. See that? Pretty easy. We'll do that again. Bring our yarn forward, slip five. One, two, three, four, five. Bring my yarn to the back and knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I would continue that all the way around. Once again, I would knit the following row, then do another row with the float. Knit the following row, do another row with the float. Then the following row, that would be row 12. I change colors again, and that's when I will catch the float and knit it to the center stitch of those five floats. Pretty easy stuff. So far, so far, I have been knitting for a total of 13 minutes. So if we consider that each color change takes us about 13 minutes, you could roughly figure out about how long it will take you to finish the cowl based on how many color changes you want. We carry on with this stitch pattern all the way around for round seven. Round eight will be a plain knit row. Round nine will be another float row. Round 10 will be a knit row. Round 11 will be a float row. It's when we get to round 12 that we change colors and change the stitch pattern once again. So I'm gonna get through this entire color sequence and time myself so that way I can have a very good estimate on how long it will take me to finish this cowl. Ready? Set, go. Ah, <laughs> it's crazy. Like you're trying to speed through it to see how fast it goes and you start making silly mistakes. Oh, I'm so close. I wanna see how fast I can get all these rows done. So close, okay, and there's five. One, two, three, four, five. So close. One, two. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. How many? Oh, nine minutes. Nine minutes and 31 seconds. Woo! <laughs> okay, so I did those rounds in nine minutes and 31 seconds. So that's how long it takes for me to work through one full sequence. Now that didn't count the round I did where I was picking up all the stitches. So I'm going to round that up to like 
12 minutes, okay? So let's say that each color sequence I use on my cowl takes me about 12 minutes, okay? So um, let's go ahead and learn how to pick these ones up once again, just to make sure we're refreshing, and then we will do a little math to figure out just how far we can get. So my next color, should I do sunset or should I do this? Ooh, I want that. That is, um, this is dragon fruit. Oop, I have a nice little self-imposed knot here that I accidentally just got just from getting the colors all mixed up. So this is dragon fruit. I love this color. I love it right next to these colors. It's very pretty. So I'm going to tie it on to the green tee, just like before. And you'll notice I'm leaving a nice long tail so that way I can weave those in later. And we are ready to work. This would be row 12, okay? So this is row 12. And here at the start, we really don't have to think too much about it, right? Because we know we have five stitches there that are slipped, and we know we want to work into that middle one. So I will knit two. So knit one, knit two, go underneath those bars, go into the next stitch on my left-hand needle and knit it, and then bring that knit underneath all those bars. Now I will knit nine. Go underneath the bars, go into that next stitch, knit that stitch, and pull it underneath the bars. Pretty simple. I'll do this all the way around to the last seven stitches, and I will just knit those. And there you go. So that is the end of row tw round 12. So this full series right here from round one to round 12, that is the repeat, okay? You want to continue on repeating rounds one through 12 until your cowl is as tall as you want it to be or until it reaches the measurement written in the pattern. Totally up to you either way. The best thing to do though is on round 12, you want to finish with the color that you want to have at the opposite end of your cowl for the ribbing. Okay, so here's the pattern. We started off with ribbing and we worked for about an inch. Then we jumped into the 12 round stitch pattern, right? It's 12 rounds and you repeat those 12 rounds as often as you want until the cowl is the size you want it to be. On the final round 12, you just wanna make sure you're using the same color that you want your final ribbing portion to be. So if I wanted it to be the same suede color, on my final round 12, I would use suede. Then I jump into a knit one pearl one ribbing, just like I did down here. I want it to be roughly the same size as this one. So if I wanted to go in here and count exactly how many rounds I did, I could do that, or I could just work it until it measures about an inch. At that point in time, you will bind off in pattern. All that means is when you see a knit stitch, you'll knit it. When you see a purl stitch, you'll purl it. And just like always, you have the back stitch, jump over the front stitch to bind it off. Okay, it's very easy. When that is done, weave in your tails, block your cowl just to give it a nice little bath and make it smell good, and then let it dry and wear it with pride. I'm going to go ahead and finish my cowl. I will join you back here probably tomorrow. It's late at night here. It is almost six o'clock at night. I'm going to work on my cowl tonight and come back here early in the morning to show you what I have complete. So that way you can see that this really is a quick project, depending on how big you want it to be. So far, I've only been working on this for maybe 45 minutes total, um, not very long. So you could totally do this with a little bit of practice. You'll find that those rows go really fast. The ones with the slip stitches, they just zoom right on by. Okay, so I'm leaving you with your homework. I'm gonna finish my own homework and I'll see you tomorrow with uh, my finished cowl. I can't wait to show you. Here we go. Okay, I'm back. I worked a, another about three hours on my cowl and here's how it looks. Isn't this absolutely beautiful? I am so happy with the scrap yarn colors I pulled together. The only one that I didn't have at the start was this VIP blue color. And I was like, you know, when I got right here, I'm like, mm, something's missing. And I grabbed that blue color 
And to me, that was perfect. It was the perfect color combination. It doesn't matter what color transitions to the next here. They all work together so well. I am so very happy with this. I did have a lot of ends to weave in, but I took care of that quickly with my tapestry needle and just a little bit of time. It didn't take that long at all, but that's where all my ends are woven in right there. And it's just hidden away and it fits just perfectly. It has been given a nice little bath in some eucalyn and it's ready for me to either gift or, all right, let's just be honest. I'm going to keep this one for myself because I love it way too much. Okay, now you know how to make this really great quick knit cowl. All you need to do now is grab that free pattern, grab some scraps of yarn, your size nine needles, a stitch marker, and you are on your way. I'm Marley Bird. This is the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Make sure you have hit subscribe and smash that like button to let other people know you other uh, people's <laughs> to let other people know you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.